So, hi everyone, this is Uttam. I work as an artist for a startup called Artu. Today, I would be speaking about um, data visualization and a Java based scripting tool called Processing. I would just like to give you a brief kind of attention search to all of you that this talk is going to be really different from other things that you're going to hear throughout the day. So, probably it might be very eccentric too. So, I'll just start with this attention that so please listen to this talk with an open mind so that you get inspired and then get excited into the world of data and visualization. So first I'll start off with data. There is a definition, a dictionary definition that you all can find in dictionaries. It's like data is a collection of facts. And in like today's social media dominated world, everyone thinks that okay, if I want to visualize something, I need to look up for cool sources. I mean, look up cool sources for data like Facebook, Twitter, Google, or it might be any other social media platform. But in my personal opinion, I feel data is everywhere around you. It's in the voice you hear, it's it's in the things you see, it's in the thoughts you get, and and so on. So it's basically data is everywhere around you it's up to you to uh, kind of innovate and imagine like what you want your data set to be and uh, giving it a couple of examples like the things that interested me like astronomical data that is data that is related to the planets positions of stars and sun and biological data that you guys might have seen outside like there's a lot of genome data and other data that are being analyzed and being tried to visualize to get some insights and other valuable information and there is the obvious social data and stock market data but there is an interesting domain of data that i have encountered recently it is called personal data with personal data i mean th there is a habit that is being practiced by certain people by trying to kind of observe their personal self and try to monitor might be their sleep cycles their food habits or might be blood glucose levels or it might be behavioral patterns so the they have a certain purpose to observe their personal data like might be to cope certain chronic problems or it might be to just kind of visualize their data sets and try to get a better understanding of their personal self so the group of people call this technique called self quantization or quantified self and after this i'll go into the my favorite part visualization and visualization can be a digital entity or it can be a physical form so majority of the examples that i'm going to give you today is going to cover the physical part of visualization because ha people hardly are covering physical side of visualizations in this uh, event so again uh, to me visualization is anything that is <coughs> capable of producing a visual stimulus so which obviously means it need not just be a digital entity and the type of medium or the pixel you choose to represent your data will convert your visualization into a digital one or a physical one so i'll go ahead with giving certain examples which will definitely excite you to create some of the cool stuff that i'm going to show you here so one example that i've taken is photographs everyone look at photographs as a memory or a souvenir or might be like a hobby or like a art form but i see photographs as visualization like it is a camera is capturing a lot of transient data which is position of an object or might be a person or it can be a static object as well the example that i'm going to give you now this is a visualization it's actually a photograph taken by a student uh, who is doing her like masters in art at University of Hertfordshire. So what she has done is she has tried to visualize the position of sun by taking six months of data. If you see this picture has a lot of streaks and a couple of breaks in between. So all the bright lines you see is the streak produced by movement of sun from dawn to dusk. And the lowest is like June 21st that is the summer solstice and the utmost is like winter solstice that December 21st. So this visualization shows you data of six months and the intermittent breaks that you see for a, in a streak that is because the sun got obscured by clouds so this is one interesting visualization that 
might be out of the box thing for people like who are in the digital age. And another object that I would like to look at is mirrors. Mirrors are reflection. Mirrors have a unique property of showing real objects in a virtual world. So if you want to create your visualization that has got something to do with like real objects, you can explore mirrors and try to generate might be symmetric patterns like in a kaleidoscope. So this might or might not be like for a specific data set, but the reason I've given you for this example is just to give you a possibility where people can explore and try to uh, bring some interesting or insightful visualizations out of physical objects. And since I'm an artist and predominantly a visual artist, I would like to see art as a form of visualization. So what an artist does, an artist tries to kind of put his thoughts or emotions on a canvas or a medium of his choice. And the colors, the medium, the technique the artist chooses will actually decide the end result of a visualization. So, in, and in a way, art is also a visualization of mnemonic data. Mnemonic data is like memories. You, you try to recollect something and try to put onto your medium of choice. So in this example, this is a painting titled A Starry Night by Dutch post-impressionist painter called Vincent van Gogh. This can also be called as a pointillistic technique uh, painting. The reason I pointed out this example is to highlight the rich palette that he has used, the vibrant blue colors and the mysterious sky that he has envisioned. He actually made this painting when he is in a sanatorium and this actually came to him as a vision like how he is viewing the world or this also has an artistic meaning that this painting represents his volatile state of mind and in the second example this is a painting by an american artist called jackson pollock he has titled this autumn rhythm until him all the previous artists that has come has used in some way or the other like especially in like when the medium is paint, they try to touch the brush to the canvas and then try to make streaks, strokes and like other techniques. But he's the only person who has used wet medium paint without touching the brush to the canvas and then trying to use it like a drip medium and then make this painting. The reason is, if this painting actually signifies, he wanted to convey the heroic nature of an American by looking inward of himself. Like if you see there are a lot of People might call this uh, childish art luck or just like scribbling, but there is a way, I mean, but there are a lot of other people who try to look at it as like how he has tried to control his constrained and unconstrained movements of the brush and then try to create this contrasting black and white dots on this canvas. <coughs> and the next example is actually a sculpture. It is by Michelangelo, he is a renaissance a renaissance sculptor the title is la pita it's in italian which translates to pity until him all the previous artists have chosen the death of jesus and like virgin mary as some sort of a pitiful or some sort of uh, thing which is evoking pity in people but this particular sculpture of michelangelo actually evokes divinity and spirituality rather than just pity and the medium that he has chosen is a marble sculpture. This uh, stands at like St. Peter's Basilica. If you, if you would like to uh, get some sense of the form, this is again like the famous uh, Da Vinci kind of like exploration of the form, which is a pyramidal shape where it starts off with like Virgin Mary's head and then it ends with the drape or the clothing of Virgin Mary. The reason I showed all of your, all of these physical examples is you don't necessarily need quantifiable data to make a visualization. People often tend to think I need a CSV file or it might be needing a text file to make cool something which is visual in nature or might be a visualization. So you don't necessarily need data in numbers to arrive in making your visualization. And now I'll quickly come to uh, quantifiable data. The quantifiable data is something which you can represent in the form of numbers or it might be in the form of values. So these are a couple of examples I'd like to show you. Like first one is like some sort of relational mapping. That's again uh, some sort of quantifiable data that he has visualized. And the other one is a point cloud. Again, the sizes of each word represents the popularity or like might be the frequency of the using that data set. And this is again like demographic data that has been visualized. 
uh, on a map and that is a three dimensional data which is again like coordinates which is again like quantifiable and i would like to concentrate on the, the color picker which is also quantifiable data the reason why i have chosen again this color picker is we everyone might have used at least once in our lives a color picker but not many of us know that it's also a visualization and the re, and there is a specific reason why yellow is placed between red and green or blue is placed between magenta and cyan so as all of you know like digital colors are essentially groups of numbers let it be rgb or cmyk or let it be hsv they are displayed through pixels and color picker is actually a three dimensional data like rgb is like three dimensions right it is tried to kind of uh, reduce it to a two dimensional form by making a color picker so what exactly uh, they did is there are certain algorithms that they do to reduce three dimensional data in two dimensional form while retaining the same cartesian distance in higher order with cartesian distance i mean like the distance between red and yellow is preserved even in two dimensional space as well as in three dimensional space so every color picker that you see is a visualization of numerous sets of rgb values and now again like with quantifiable data again like some of the physical examples of visualizations so the first one you see is a push pin art that people have used the push pins that used on billboards to create the visuals and the next one is actually a portrait or a form created using uh, stapler pins the artist has tried to punch stapler pins on a wall to create this physical form of a visualization i mean right now like these are like static forms of visualization they need not be static they can be tried to make interactive and that will actually depend on your imagination like how do you want your data to be represented in a physical form yet make it making it interactive and here i have a short video to show you so this is actually a kinetic sculpture placed at bmw museum in munich they have used an array of metal balls and strings to create these wonderful visualizations people might call this interactive art but i call it uh, i think you just got like some sense of how it looks i'm sorry i mean there's some problem with the internet but so this is how like they have produced the bmw car using a series of metal balls and strings and this is again another example of physical visualization it's actually a water fountain in a japanese mall they have used droplets of water in intermittent uh breaks to create this visualization it's actually wonderful and one of my favorite things to get inspired and try to explore more of such sort of like physical visual forms for like representing data so it's actually an image that is being en encoded onto a water fountain and then the gaps that you see actually breaks in the water that is dripping from top these are like all the kind of examples that i have chosen to excite you into the world of visualizations and to be more specific the physical side of visualization rather than just a digital side uh, i have almost uh, come to the second part of my talk where i would be speaking about a digital tool um, a tool called processing which can be used uh, to make digital visualizations so there are other uh, so processing is a java based uh, scripting tools so java is like object oriented and all like it has a lot of like online support and stuff that you guys know and there are like other equivalent frameworks which are in c++ it's called open frameworks and a lot of javascript libraries if you want to create uh digital visualizations so so uh, processing is a java based programming language for artists or designers and it is founded by ben fry and casey is while at mit media lab i would quickly show you how processing id looks like <coughs> so this is how basic processing id looks like it's very minimalistic in design which has very basic options like whether you can run your code stop you can save and export your code so the uh, processing program is called a sketch it primarily has two parts one is a setup and the other one is a draw so the setup method runs a single time and you can use it to initialize your data and the draw method uh, it loops endlessly until you call the no loop function and you can use it to handle animation yeah i would like to explain more about processing by taking an example that i have done as a part of 
a pool um, like i'm part of a, a studio called lucid it is a studio for speculative art in bangalore like headed by prayas abhinav who's a faculty at srishti school of art and design we meet monthly or bi monthly to create interesting stuff and like hack a couple of softwares to create visual art so one of the pool that i have been to is titled like organic digital at this particular pool i tried to visualize the input of a microphone and i have visualized the microphone input like a volcano whatever you speak are the particles or lava of a volcano and even i'll first show you the thing that i've done so you get better idea on like what it exactly looks like and this here is so this is how it works so each particle you see is actually uh, for like one specific frequency in the input signal and the size of each particle defines the magnitude i mean the amplitude at that particular instant where i'm sampling it and if you can see like whenever i'm speaking there are a lot of particles coming out and also the mountain is shaking i mean i have taken a threshold if the threshold is more than that particular thing the mountain actually vibrates so um so this is essentially a particle system so each particle has a lifetime and a position and like certain style attributes that are associated to each particle it also has velocity and if you guys can see like there is gravity that i have placed in this particular drawing for the particles to fall downwards so this will create with this windows so that you guys can see while i'm speaking so yeah as i have told you like so the problem is just paste this code on a notepad so that it will be easy for us so yeah um, this particular piece of code uh, requires a couple of libraries that you need to import to get the audio signal from the microphone so one of the audio library is called minim audio library and like minim analysis for like processing the input audio signal and get the frequency out of it and this library called processing.video can actually be used to capture the video stream that is being generated on on the renderer and like these are a couple of initializing variables like i have defined a particle system and like couple of variables for the colors and if you guys can see like in the setup i have tried to initialize the size of the window the color mode and the particle system and like i have it has two things like if you don't use smooth method the graphics that are being produced like the geometries like circle or it might be the basic of they won't be smooth they have a rough edge so i have used smooth method to to get a better uh, resolution of the objects and then the FFT is a fast for uh, for your power for your transform. I have used that to sample the incoming signal and then try to get the frequency from the left channel of the incoming signal. And this part covers the initialization part of it. And this is the method draw where I have actually defined the background color, the shape. And here this this part is actually the mountain. If you guys can see, like I have defined a Bezier curve, which is essentially a curve that is obtained by joining a couple of vertices. I have placed like where I want each vertex, and then I have kind of rotated in certain degree to kind of get that vibration or like shaking moment. So this is how I, where I am getting the frequency from the input channel, and this is the yeah. in that buffer size is the buffer size of the incoming signal and and kind of looping it in a thing so that the visualization runs while the input is on and if you see like i have added a last thing called mm is a movie maker object and i have written like add frame so what it essentially does is it takes each frame of the visualization and captures it into a dot mov file and once i 
press a space bar key like I can get the movie saved. If I would like to show you the settings that you can specify like while um, recording the movie probably like I'll show it to you on the next example that I have for you guys. So, so this is basically like how I try to visualize the input of a microphone in a more artistic and like organic form. I mean the green color represents organic and the way each particle pulsates in a sine wave is also like has got to do something with analog rather than like digital so that that's my idea behind making this visualization and the next example that i have for you guys is the example that i made uh, the visualization i made during hack night hosted by haski i tried to visualize the marks of 10th and 12th grade students in bangalore not marks rather whether they have passed or failed in a uh, in their final board exams to me pass or fail is just kind of a label and has got nothing to do with the student's ability or like how he can perform better in anything and school is a place is rich of opportunities so i try to visualize school like an egg which is rich of potential and like and it's rich of opportunities so unless if you give a chance to students so you can actually make them create wonders so this is how the visualization actually looks like So each circle that you are seeing here represents a school and red represents the number of students who have failed in their board exams and white represents number of students who have passed in their board exams. So the larger the circle, the larger is the number of students in that particular school. And this actually processed like the data of 1 lakh students of schools all over Bangalore, north and south of Bangalore. I have limited my uh, domain to just like urban Bangalore. It's because of the constraints that I had while processing like 230 MB of data using processing. So this is one of the kind of, you can say, limitations of processing. It cannot handle like very heavy data sets. So the data set that I've used right now is around like 100 MB, which uh, spans like 1 lakh students over a couple of hundred schools in Bangalore. So each circle is like an egg and once the visualization finishes, <coughs> we can actually see how many potential centers are in and around Bangalore. The positions are chosen randomly. They don't have any significance. I actually tried to map this on like a map, but that has become too complex for people to read the circles as well as the uh, what demographic data. So I just tried to put it on a blank piece of canvas. Yeah, it's kind of overriding. So it's it's also like uh, kind of I have tried to add a Z index that unfortunately I cannot show you right now. What happens is like you can actually uh, use your mouse to kind of swap through and then see them arranged like a stack. So all the circles are not in a single plane. So they are in different uh, but Z directional planes. Uh, it's actually it has a transparency. So whatever gray you are seeing is actually red overlaid on white. So that's why like it is bringing that. Uh, uh, difference in the tone of shade you can see so eventually i had to i'm kind of against with uh, using quantifiable data to make visualizations but i have ended up using quantifiable data so i'll just show you like what is the data set how I... right right and the, actually every time the space is limited right so can we use the can we ch uh, change the color intensity from light to dark to visualize more in a limited area, means can we use different colors? Means uh, how can you? Uh, uh, I mean, like if you are talking about the real estate of the canvas, where like the objects are getting uh, hidden, or it might be the space, it's, it's actually spanning across. I mean, way beyond the boundaries. I have tried to add a padding to my visualization, but uh, unfortunately, the circles are much bigger. If you see, the padding is obvious on the left hand side corner of the this particular part. Like they have added a little padding, but like certain circles, since they are randomly positioned. The one beyond the canvas. Uh, <laughs> yeah, probably you can do that. So that can be easily done with with, with this parameter and I mean, to, to me, like I would like to see both data and visualization as two separate entities. 
I want people to get inspired by data as such in its raw form and visualizations as such in raw form and then try to come to a common ground and blend two of the entities. That's, that's the reason why I've shown you like certain examples which need not necessarily be a data visualization examples, but they are in a way we are capable of getting uh, linked to data sets and then create cool visualizations. So that's the reason why I've taken like different examples for data sets and like visualization. So again, uh, this visualization is split up into like setup method and the draw method in the setup. I have uh, defined the size, the background, and this is where like I've loaded the data in from a CSV. So it's the data for like 2011, and this is just like kind of a subset of the bigger data set. So I just renamed it that way. And what essentially I did is the CSV contains a lot of parameters for individual students. I tried to get parameters that I'm interested in and try to put in a two dimensional array, and then try to uh, read the values of each element and then try to increase or decrease the radius and place them randomly. So if you look at the draw method, that's what I essentially did. I tried to count the number of students who failed, number of students who have passed, and sorry, the comment thing doesn't have a, a syntax highlight, so they actually come here as the normal ones. So yeah, that, that I think that's majorly like broadly covering like what I've done using the data and like my perspective on like how it is visualized like artistically. So I think I've almost come to the end of my talk. So it's one of the small lines that I would like to kind of remind everyone that don't let the kid in you die, explore, dream and discover.